I lived with my grandparents who were prominent ministers in the nation of Islam. We read the Quran, we went to the mosque, we refrained from certain food. One day my mom ended up getting married to someone who was a Christian who became my stepdad. She got custody of us and we moved out. I ended up moving out with my grandparents with my mom and we started to go to church. But I didn't really reject Islam and accept Jesus. I was just kind of going along with the flow. I realized I was saved in the religion side of Christianity versus the relationship. But I still encountered the Lord Jesus Christ. I gave my life to him. Fast forward, my mom ends up divorcing this man. Um, moving out, I'm 17 years old. I get around the wrong crowd. I knew that there was this crib that lived down the street from me. So I started to hang out with him. One day, he just recruits me. One day, I'm on Facebook and there's this guy who's messaging me and he's talking to me about Jesus. He asked me a question. He texts me. He says, are you in a gang right now? I, like on my phone, I'm like texting. I'm like, bro, how did you know that? I didn't tell anybody about that I was in a gang. He was like, God just spoke to me and told me you're in a gang and if you don't get out, something bad's going to happen to you. One day, I woke up and I just felt like death was right there. I just felt like something bad was going to happen. So I'm like, I better probably listen. And so I text the leader of the gang again. I go to his house. I look and he's on the phone with someone and he's like, hey, where you at? I need you to come over here and take care of something for me. When I tell you my heart dropped all the way to the ground, I was like, oh crap, God, please, please just help me. He looks and he's like, hello. And he looks confused. And I see him with his fingers make another phone call. He's like, hello, can you hear me? And he looks confused again. He does this three times and I hear a voice tell me he's calling people to come and hurt you, but I'm dropping the calls for you. What's going on, guys? It is Big Nick back for another podcast. I'm very excited about this one today. Well, really, I'm just excited about all of them because Jesus gets glorified in everyone. Amen. Um, I'm here with my brother, Murad. He's a mighty man of God. He's a pastor out in Ohio, and he has a very powerful testimony. I actually got connected with this brother, I would say, like two years ago through a mutual friend. And, uh, you know, I came across his testimony on Instagram, and I was just absolutely mind blown. I mean, this man has been through it all. Uh, and he found out that Jesus Christ was the answer at the very end of it. So I'm very excited and honored to have you on. I appreciate man, you so much, you, bro. You. This man drove 13 hours <laughs> just to get here on the podcast. Amen. This man loves God. He wants God glorified. Amen. Because mm -hmm. 13 hours is a long time. The most I've ever drove is like five hours. <laughs> but, you know, the Lord will work on me. He'll increase Amen. me in strength on the road in Jesus' name. <laughs> Before we get into today's podcast, I want to let you guys know, if you like Christian content, please give this video a like, subscribe to my channel down below if you are new, and turn on my post notifications so you never miss a new video. Without further ado, let's get into Murad's testimony. So take us, man, take us to the very beginning. I mean, I've heard your testimony already, but what was your upbringing like and how did you come to Jesus Christ? Yes, sir. So um, I grew up in the inner city of Dayton, Ohio. Um, I live with my grandparents who were um, prominent ministers in the nation of Islam. It's a little bit similar to uh, what we see overseas and in the different religions. But I would like to say it's like more of the Americanized mm -hmm. um, Islam. So they have different beliefs, um, but they, it's still the same thing, you know, religion. Yeah. So um, we read the Quran. We, you know, went to the mosque. We refrained from certain foods, you know, couldn't eat certain things like pork and stuff, which was hard for me because I love Chick-fil-A. And, you know, I know that's the Lord's, you know, <laughs> his, his his meal. That he fed chicken Come in the wilderness. But uh, we're not going to get into that today. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so my mom did not have custody of me, my two brothers, and my sister. My sister ended up, you know, she ran away from home ended up, you know, getting taken advantage of sexually and uh, ended up, you know, going into a bunch of different group homes and stuff like that. So uh, it was just me, my mom, my two brothers, and it was very abusive. You know, the relationship that I had with my grandparents, you know, they would abuse my mom many times. They would, you know, you know, take advantage of her financially, physically, all kinds of things like that. And uh, we just didn't really have no hope. And so one day my mom ended up getting, you know, married to someone who was a Christian who became my stepdad. She got custody of us and we moved out. And uh, my experience in Islam, I always tell people, is that for some reason I just never really got into it as much. I had the knowledge of it. I had the religion, the tradition of it. But there was just something in my heart as a kid that just I just didn't like it. So I, I'd like to think like now that that was God just kind of keeping me. And so I ended up moving out with from my grandparents with my mom and we started to go to church and I really liked it. I thought it was cool, but I didn't really reject 
Islam and accept Jesus. I was just kind of going along with the flow. Mm -hmm. And um, I liked church because, like, if you remember, like, two or three Bible verses, they'd give you donuts. <laughs> so, like, I knew the Lord's Prayer. I knew Psalm 23. I knew Genesis. I knew everything. Just yeah. so them donuts, they were good. It's a good incentive <laughs> to memorize scripture as yeah, a kid, yeah. right? Free donuts. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I realized, and I'm going to share a little bit in a second, that, you know, I was saved in the religion, the religion side of Christianity um, versus the relationship. But I still encountered the Lord Jesus Christ. I gave my life to him. Um, but fast forwarding, my mom ends up, you know, divorcing this man. We started to um, have a lot of problems with him. And it just put a bad taste also in my in my mind about you know christianity if you're supposed to be this man of god why why do you treat us like this so mm -hmm. um moving out i'm 17 years old i get around the wrong crowd my dad wasn't also in my life as much my mom started to do what she had to do you know uh to put food on the table you know mm -hmm. you know full disclosure but um i saw you know different guys in the house and you know i started to find myself you know also struggling a lot with uh, lust and even homosexuality, pornography, all of these things. I was smoking weed every day. If I didn't have money to, you know, get weed, I was breaking into cars, breaking into houses to get it. I was just driven by a lot of anger, a lot of hurt, a lot of seeking a father, a lot of rejection. And um, I just didn't have any hope. You know, I was just a young kid that was looking for something but didn't know what I was looking for. And so... At the age of 17, uh, there was this, like, neighborhood gang that my friends were all getting into, but uh, I just couldn't get into it because they were, like, kind of racist. <laughs> so, <laughs> what was the gang? It was, like, a... It was um, the gang that they were in. It was... It, it was a neighborhood gang, but yeah. the one I got into was like a, like a real street gang. Uh -huh. So um, it was just a, a neighborhood gang called like Wolfpack, but I couldn't get into it. So um, I knew that there was this crib that lived down the street from me. So mm -hmm. I started to hang out with him. I started to smoke weed with him. I started to hang out with him. And, uh, you know, one day he just, you know, basically recruits me. He mm -hmm. like sh shares the whole recruit recruiting thing. He's like, Yo, you know, when it comes to cripping and all this, you got to do this, 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 this. You got to put in work. He starts to explain who you are, organization, retaliation, killing, all the, all the whole rundown. Yeah. And he blesses me in. And I didn't realize I got blessed in until I, until he, he asked me a question. He's like, you know, so what do you say? And I was like, I'm with it. Yeah. And, but I didn't realize subconsciously I was literally being initiated at yeah. the age of 17 into cribs. And so um, going down the path a little bit more, I started to have very bad behavior problems in school. I got expelled from high school. Um, I had got locked up a few times. I was facing a lot of charges, death charges, misdemeanors, all kind of stuff like that, drug paraphernalia. You know, the typical teenage street life. Yeah. And um, But I was, again, still looking for something. I just, in my heart, because of the seeds that were planted as I was going to church, was, you know, to do what's right. So I had that conviction just down deep in my heart. But yeah. I just never, you know, follow through with it or obeyed that voice so um one day i'm on facebook and there's this guy who's messaging me and he's talking to me about jesus and you know i could tell he was a christian everything he was asking me certain questions and i was like answering him like yeah man i, I go to church you know and then i, I started to get a little prideful uh, because he was like convicting me he was like saying like hey you know you gotta we, we gotta live right and stuff and so i'm like you know the bible says that god er gave every herb bearing seed you know yeah, what do you think about weed? Is yeah. it okay? Is it not okay? And he says, you know, the Bible talks about being sober and being vigilant and, and et cetera, uh, so that you won't be spiritually deceived. When you smoke, you open up the door to spirits, et cetera. Yeah. So I was like, all right, bro, I, I got to go. I don't really believe in that. And he asked me a question. He texts me. He says, um, are you in a gang right now? And I, I, I'm I like on my phone. I'm like, Texting, I'm like, bro, how did you know that? I'm thinking, let's do this to police because yeah. I didn't tell anybody about that I was in a gang mm -hmm. except for my best friend who was an atheist and my mom who obviously was a Christian. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, this is the police. So I ain't trying to tell him nothing. <laughs> and so I'm like, how did you know that? He was like, God just spoke to me and told me that you're in a gang and if you don't get out, something bad's going to happen to you. Wow. And I start tripping out because I was also high that night. So I don't know yeah. if the trip was that or it was a conviction. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So um, I grabbed my mom's Bible, which just so happened to be on my desk. And he said, grab because he said, grab the Bible, pray, and God will speak to you. That was it. It wasn't no baptism. It wasn't no outreach. It wasn't no come to the altar. It was just simple, raw, pray. Mm -hmm. 
And so I grabbed the Bible and I said, God, if you're real and you want me to get out of this gang, show me a message in this Bible. And I skimmed through the pages and I felt to stop and I opened it up. And it was the only scripture that was highlighted on the page in Proverbs 3, 25 and 26. It said, do not fear sudden terror of the wicked, for the Lord shall be your confidence and keep your foot from being taken from evil. And if you know about like, you know, gang activity yeah. and or if you get blessed in, you're not getting blessed out. Yeah. You either got to get jumped out or shot out. Mm. You know what I'm saying? I only been in it for like a couple of months. Yeah. And so that really scared me. Uh, when he told me that I was in the game, something bad's going to happen. But something also was giving me, like, like strength to be able to get out. So I text the leader of the game. I'm like, hey, man. I go, well, his street name was, like, Greedy. So yeah. I'm like, hey, Greedy. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm trying to get out of the gang, you know. Uh, I want to go back to school. And my mom told me to go to church. And, you know, I'm trying to get, you know, I kind of, like, lied a little bit. Yeah. And he's like, go to church. Come to my house. So I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, that's it. That's yeah, easy. Yeah, yeah. So I'll go to his house. Uh, I go inside and he's like standing at the door and I walk in and then I turn around and he just like starts beating me up wow. and he like literally picks me up and throws me to the wall oh my and goodness. he's like bro you can't just get out you ain't been putting in work and different things like that and he was just saying like you, can, you, you can't just get out that easy so that scared me and I ended up staying in the gang mm -hmm. bad stuff kept happening after that though I come outside one day of my porch and I look and there's literal blood in a line from my door because i lived in like a quad apartment uh -huh. where it's like four apartment like little building so it started from my uh, um my door all the way down to like a sewer almost like someone like did some type of a sacrifice i don't i don't even know yeah I, still to this day i don't know where it came from but uh it started from my door all the way into the sewer and uh that scared me next thing you know also i had got into a fight with the knife involved and uh, I got, you know, hit and cut under my left eye, 70 stitches inside and out. And that, and that day, I just I just felt like I needed to change. I needed, I kept hearing, get out of the game, something bad's going to happen. But I also kept hearing, the Lord would be your confidence, keep your foot from being taken. So fast forwarding to the closing part of this, um, I texted the leader of the gang again. Because one day I woke up and I just felt like, like death was right there. Um, and I just felt like something bad was going to happen. So I'm like, I better probably listen. You know, I had some type of consciousness of God. I had some type of consciousness of the Bible. And so I text the leader of the gang again, excuse me. And I go to his house cause he told me to come and I'm on my way there. Excuse me. And he says, uh, and I, and I pray, I'm praying on my way there. I'm like, God, if you get me out of this game, I will serve you. But if you don't get me out of this game, and I die today, at least I die for you. That was my prayer. Yeah. You know? And so I go into the house, and uh, I sit down, and he's on the phone. And his girlfriend, he comes, she comes next to me, and she's, like, rubbing my back. She's like, I love you. Everything's going to be okay. <laughs> and all these things. I'm like, yep, I'm dying today. Yeah. This wraps. <laughs> I'm done. I'm literally getting killed today. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I'm praying. I'm like, God, please have him change his mind. So I look. This is the craziest part of this story. I look and he's on the phone with someone and he's like, Hey, where you at? I need you to come over here and take care of something for me. I'm when I tell you my heart dropped all the way to the ground. Like oh my goodness. Below the ground, past the ground, like all the way down. I was like, Oh crap. God, please, please just help me. Yeah. Change his mind. That's what I kept saying. Change his mind. And he looks and he's like, Hello? And he looks confused. And I see him with his fingers, make another phone call. He's like, hello, can you hear me? Hello? And he looks confused again. He does this three times, and I'm looking at him, like, kind of confused. Like, is you good? Yeah. And I hear a voice tell me. It said, he said, he's calling people to come and hurt you, but I'm dropping the calls for you. <sighs> wow. I wish I had that reaction. After that, I was like, Okay, Lord, just please change his mind. I didn't realize yeah. it was God. So yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't realize until after the fact that, like, holy crap, that was the Lord helping Dude, me. That's crazy. And so I'm praying still. I'm like, God, please help him, uh, help me change his mind, please. Yeah, so yeah. he come over. He's like, he sits down. He's like, you got a gun? I'm like, brother, no, I'm 17. <laughs> I don't got no freaking gun. Yeah, yeah. He's like, we're well, going to need to get one because my YGs was an acronym for uh, young gangsters. They might come and hurt you. I don't know what they're going to do. I already told them about you, this and this and this and that. And he's like saying all this stuff. And I'm just like, God, please just have him change my mind. And I close my eyes and he says, get out of my house. Don't claim us no more. Wow. 
And I look up and I, and I was like, that's it? And he was like, yeah. And then I went to go and try to be like, yeah, but I, it was like God said, bro, if you don't get up and get out the house. <laughs> so I felt that unction. So I was like, let me grab my stuff. Yeah. So I get outside. I start walking home. I start jogging home. I start running home. I mean, I'm sprinting. I don't know if you play Call of Duty. I'm slide canceling. I'm like building. I'm doing all that. I'm like booking it to the house. Yeah. I go to my house. I throw my bag on the ground. I get on my knees and I all I do is start saying like, God, thank you. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for saving me. Just over and over. I'm sorry, God. Thank you for helping me. Thank you for saving me. And then I just start crying. It was like something came and took the roof off of my, my room and just went straight and touched me. And I'm crying for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, one hour, two hours, three hours. I'm talking snot everywhere. Wow. And I give my life to Jesus right there in my room. There was no church. There was no altar call. Nothing. Just me and the Lord. And uh, I grabbed all my drugs. I threw it in a, on a trash can and stuff like that. And um, after that, you know, I started going to church. A guest speaker t- came to my church, gave me a scholarship to a Bible college, went to Bible college. But here's the thing um, about my testimony. Uh, when I got saved, uh, there was not a lot of discipleship and accountability around me. Speak on that. So when it came to me, I loved God. I had a lot of zeal, but I still had a lot of bondage. Mm. And a lot of people don't realize the necessity of deliverance and knowledge and revelation of the blood of Jesus yes. and deliverance. Yes. Elaborate on that. Okay. So... I go to, I start going to church and, uh, again, I struggled with lust. I struggled with homosexuality. I struggled with pornography. And that was like the biggest fight that I had when it came to drugs. It was easy. I moved from the environment. So it wasn't that, but I still struggled with like lust and masturbating and all these things. And even when I went to Bible college, I was still struggling with sin. And so, um, there was a lot of renew your mind with the Bible, you know, read the word. God will yeah. help you. There was a lot of just pray and, and, and ask God for help. But it wasn't practical. You understand? The Bible says that through knowledge shall the just be delivered. Mm-hmm. Scripture also tells us that my people perish for a lack of knowledge. The yeah. Bible also says that we should not be ignorant, which is what a lack of knowledge from the enemy schemes. Yes. And that word schemes literally means in the Greek plans, thoughts, and uh, patterns, you see. And when I started to go on this journey of deliverance, um, I started to discover a few keys about deliverance. Number one, there is the courts of heaven. Number two, there is what's called the sins of the bloodline. Mm -hmm. And number three, demonic altars, covenants, generational curses, et cetera, that a lot of people talk about. But really, they don't really know the, the deep, revelation behind it so um a scripture in the bible i'm reminded of is exodus 20 i believe in verse 5 it says in a certain translation i will punish the children for the sins of the parents another the king james says i will visit the iniquity of your forefathers up into the third and fourth generation and many people do not understand this this is why it's very important because you'll see somebody in church their whole life yes. you'll see somebody who um may be a pastor may be a minister yet they still have problems with sin Ooh. or they've been free yet there is a visitation of something that comes from the bloodline i'll give you a few examples in the bible here's job all right the enemy comes he presents himself before the lord the bible says that uh, the lord says have you considered my servant job righteous blameless pure basically in good standing with me mm-hmm. but the devil then says yeah i understand that but you have a hedge of protection around him remove it and i bet you he'll curse you yeah how did the enemy know that information because if you look at a few verses before that he asked he says lucifer or satan where did you come from and he said i came from roaming the earth mm. roaming doing what trying to find information so either in Job's line, in his in his life, or in his bloodline, there was a habit of people mocking God or cursing God. Wow. I'll give you another. You have um, uh, Joshua, Zechariah chapter 3. Mm-hmm. The Bible says he was standing before the Lord. The angel was standing with him. And Satan there to accuse him. Yeah. All right. It said that Joshua was in, uh, uh, he was, he was in um, a house of rebellious people. Same thing with uh, 
Um, am I said Joshua or Jeremiah? No, yeah, Joshua. Joshua yeah. Um, same thing with Isaiah, a man of unclean lips. And you see every time Isaiah, the angel comes, purchase the iniquity. The angel comes, takes off the garments. God says to Joshua, put on clean garments. And he sell, tells him, he says, now live right. And I'll cause you to stand in my courts. Mm -hmm. I'll give you another. You have the woman caught in adultery. Yeah. All right. Here's the Pharisees, the religious people of the, of the day, ready to stone this lady. But Jesus looks at her and says, first to the people, he who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Mm -hmm. And then he looks at the woman and he says, where are your accusers? Neither do I condemn you. However, go and sin no more. Yeah. So with all of this being said, the reason why the enemy is still able to influence people and why though they give their life to Jesus, it seems like there is, uh, they go good and then boom, falling. Or they rise, rise, rise in ministry and then boom, there's a falling. It's because the enemy still has legal rights in their bloodline. Yes, I agree 100%. Mm -hmm. So true. And so we can talk about this topic a very long time, but I'll speak for myself. When I look at my family, my sister, lesbian lifestyle, my brother, homosexual lifestyle, my cousins, homosexual lifestyle, my mom, dealt with homosexuality, my dad, wow. my grandparents, the spirit is in the bloodline. They all dealt with that? They same all sin? dealt with the same spirit. Wow. And not just that one, all of them, Islam, Freemasonry, I'm talking about witchcraft, all in the bloodline. Wow. And so I have my parents, I have my grandparents, I have all of them. Let's say it's just my, 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 my grandparents. Well, if you look at generation one, generation two, there's still two more generations after me that that sin is supposed to be visited. Wow. And if you look at my mom or look at me. And so there's another scripture in the Bible that I'm reminded of, of King Ahab. Yeah. We all know that this brother was. <laughs> this <married>. brother was, uh, <laughs> he was simped out essentially. He was a simp to a <laughs> Jezebel, right? Yeah. Literally. Yeah. But here's the thing. The Bible says in first Kings, I believe chapter 21, that he did wicked in the sight of the Lord. But when the prophet came to him and told him that basically he was about to be judged, he yeah. repented. Yeah. Bible says, and the Lord said to tell the prophet to tell him, I will not visit this evil in your day, but I will visit the iniquity, the sin, your evil in your son's day. Yeah. Flip a chapter later, Ahab does fall back away from the Lord. And then, he dies and his son rules in his stead. And the Bible says, and he did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of his father. Mm. And he ended up dying. Wow. And you look throughout the scripture, it's the same thing. I never put that, I never connected that. That, yeah, because when you do read like the genealogies of mm -hmm. the kings, it's usually like the third and fourth generations that all do evil. And then someone does walk with the Lord. He finds, I never connected that with the scripture mm -hmm. in uh, uh, Deuteronomy, it is, right? Or Exodus? Yeah, there's one in Exodus and one in Deuteronomy chapter Dude, 5. Dude, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's and, revelation right there. And yeah, and he find, he always finds a Noah yeah. who can bring the family on the boat. The Bible says he took his soul, his family yeah. on the boat. Or wow. Moses, it says, I've seen the affliction of my people. Yeah. I've seen them and I've come down to deliver them. And Moses is like, ow. And he's like, I'm going to send you. Yeah. But the first things first is that God had to deal with Moses' case. Yeah. But if you look at Moses, if you look deep, he still had problems that he never dealt with. Yeah. Because the same spirit that manifests itself when he killed the Egyptian manifested itself in the wilderness. Wow. That same spirit of anger wow. to the point where he, did, he couldn't even enter into the promised land. So God had to find another one. Joshua. Wow. Yeah. You see that? It's deep. And so when God found me, I was very zealous for the Lord. Zeal without knowledge, though, is not good for the soul, the Bible says. Amen. And so when I started to get onto this journey with deliverance and, you know, and everything like that, I started to experience freedom, but not fully. Because the Bible does say, I will not drive all out your enemies at once. I think it's in Deuteronomy or Exodus. He says, little by little will I drive them out. Because he says, if I drive them all out at once, you won't be able to, to handle it. Yeah. And so little by little, 
things started to pop up. God started to reveal, this is why, this is why. As I started to do history, uh, research on my family, one day I even called my grandfather. I'm like, hey, grandpa, I just wanted to call you and see, you know, how you doing. Actually, I called my grandmother first, right? This is a crazy story. So I called my grandmother and I'm like, you know, asking her questions, you know, about our past, our religion, everything. And I was like, you know, I had a question, like, it was my grandfather or anybody in the family in Freemasonry. And she's like, oh, yeah, I was a daughter of the Morning Star, which is the wife of Freemason. Yeah. I'm like, huh? And I was like, do you know the degree that, that my grandfather was? And, and she was like, oh, yeah, he was like the highest one. <laughs> what? I'm literally on the phone, like, <laughs> so like 33rd degree. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think he's still, no I think he's still in it. And no I'm like, way. this was like, like almost a year and a half ago. Yeah. I'm finding this out. I'm wow. Like, Are you serious? And 33rd is no joke. Oh, no joke. I, and we don't have to go um, yeah. but at, the, at this level of 33rd degree. When you do your research and um, I can send info to you or <laughs> booklets and all of that. But when you do your research at this level, you've already denounced Jesus. You've yeah. already accepted Lucifer as Lord. Yep. And you've already did blood sacrifice. Absolutely. Child sacrifice. That's like the deception with Freemasonry too, mm -hmm. is a lot of people get in it thinking that because they, Freemasonry centers itself around the belief of, oh no, we believe in a higher power. Mm -hmm. We believe in a God. And they kind of like initiate you in, get you to be more accustomed with witchcraft and rituals until yep. you get to that 32nd rank and you're going to the 33rd. And once you get there, they'll tell you like, oh yeah, by the way, we worship Lucifer. Yep. But like you're already so inducted mm -hmm. and so blackmailed at that point, it's like, how can you even get out? Mm -hmm. And to even get to the 33rd degree in Freemasonry, you actually have to go through a mock burial and resurrection. Yep. They where literally kill you. They actually, they, yeah, they literally kill mm -hmm. you and they raise up your dead body with black magic. With, with black magic, exactly. It's not even like a fake death, like it's a real death. Yep. And I know that's hard to conceptualize for some people, like how could someone die and be revived with satanic magic? Mm -hmm. But they are doing it. Yep. You it's know, so true. it does exist. It's very true. And, um, you're not allowed to, you take oaths. Yeah. And, and that's what I want to talk about because I said, mentioned number one was uh, uh, one of the things was that I mentioned earlier was demonic altars and covenants. But you take oaths, just like we take an oath yeah. uh, of, of to Jesus, right? Yeah. And there's power released for salvation. Same thing in the demonic. Yeah. When you sell your soul, when you when you make these pacts and these agreements with these spirits, they have legal right to, to come into your life. Yeah. Jesus has legal right to come into your life when you accept him as Lord. Yeah. So does the devil. Right. When you accept him as Lord, he has legal right to come into your life. Yeah. And the number one way, without you even saying anything, that you give legal right to the devil is through sin. Yes. It's through sin. Yep. That's how the Bible says when Adam fell, sin entered the world. But here's the thing. Let me give you a revelation. The earth did not sin. It was Adam, right? And Eve... Yes, but yeah. the Bible says sin entered the world, but the earth didn't sin. Right. So where did sin enter into? Into the temple, right? Into the blood. Mm. Because the Bible says the life of the flesh is in the is blood. Is in the blood, yeah, that's right. But the Bible says that the wages of sin is? Death. So where did death enter? Where did sin enter? Into his blood. Wow. And so that's why death, the Bible says, ruled and reigned from Adam to Moses to Abraham all the way up until now. Wow. The first man Adam sinned, death entered. The second man Adam, Jesus. Yeah. So life That's enters. That's why he shed his blood. Exactly. Wow. He shed his blood for one reason, for us to disconnect from the bloodline lineage of Adam yeah. to be connected now to the bloodline lineage of Jesus. Dude. That's why we can literally stand in the face of our accu accusers. We can stand in the face of the courts of heaven. We can stand in the face of a judge and say, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm justified. Yeah. Not because of what you did, not because of what you could do. It's not by works can you receive this. It's only by faith in Jesus. Yeah. But continual faith and enforcing that blood. Yeah. That Lord is your righteousness. Lord is your blood. The only way that you can get free from your sin is number one through repentance. Look at the story of the parable of the Pharisee and the sinner. The Pharisee, God, I haven't done this, I haven't done that. I'm glad I'm not like this sinner. All yeah. this stuff. What is that? Pride. Yeah justification yeah but here's the sinner humbles himself humility which is number two repentance number two humility he asks for mercy i am a sinner he confessed because he said he who confesses his sins unto the lord he will cleanse you from your unrighteousness 
Yeah. But sometimes the thing is, when you go with unrepented sin, I'm telling you, I understand that. Because even after giving my life to Jesus and in the ministry, I had terrible choices of in dabbling with sin. Yeah. And it affected a lot of people. A lot of people. People have left my ministry. People have left my side. And, and, and it's not the fact that people should feel bad for me. I'm the one who messed up. Mm -hmm. But people don't realize there were nights I was on my knees saying, like, God, I go one week. I go one month. I go two months. I go one day. Good. And then, boom, I go back <coughs> into the same thing. How? It's the same thing Paul said. I, I, the things I want to do, I don't do. Yeah. The things I don't want to do, who can deliver me from this sin? Well, you won't be delivered from this flesh until you get to heaven. Yeah. However, your spirit, man, the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Dang. So there are levels in deliverance. Number one is the casting out of the spirits, <coughs> the renunciation and the breaking of generational curses with your mouth. Yeah. Okay. With your mouth, because death and life is in the power of the tongue. He said, by your words shall you be what? Justified. Justified and or condemned. condemned. Yeah. The Bible says, who believes in your in their in their heart and does what with their mouth? Confess. Yeah, confess with their mouth. Yep. The Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. Yeah. So there is power <coughs> in life with what you say yeah. and also in death yeah. and what you say or don't say. And so uh you you humble yourself, you you break in those curses, you renounce it, you're asking for it like Nehemiah. I sinned, my father sinned, my forefather sinned, but Lord have mercy. Everywhere you see in the Bible, there was a confession with every person that God chose. There was a confession of sin and repentance and asking for mercy. Yeah. Then God helped them. Even uh, Daniel, the mm -hmm. prophet, repented for the sins of his yeah. ancestors too. You know, it's a, uh, it's biblical. Uh, and like I went through that as well because I come through an entire lineage of Hindu worship. Mm-hmm. And, like, everybody in my family has some sort of health issue. I mean, I was born with a skeletal condition called knee syndrome. I went blind in my left eye at nine years old. My um, dad's side of the family, they all died prematurely, like, mm. in their 50s, 60s. But, you know, God decided to choose me to, like, be like, all right, enough is enough. Like, Amen. you know, I want to bless this bloodline, and it's up to us if we're going to Amen. respond to the call or not because it's a privilege dude to be able to respond to that call to be Amen. the one that breaks it well obviously jesus breaks it but we obey amen because it's his will like that none should perish but all should have eternal life like it's his will for us to get it to break out of this amen you know because like it doesn't please god to people to for people to fall under a a curse because of iniquity but that's just the way the world is that's mm -hmm. how adam and eve left it for us essentially exactly. you know so it's up to us if we want to actually respond to the call of god in our lives and be the ones that you know want to put an end to all this stuff put an end to the suffering whether it be in the spiritual or in the physical amen and yeah you open you open legal right for the enemy when you're living in sin mm -hmm. and idol worship is that right idol worship is sin god hates it so i know firsthand like what it's like to be on that end of things and also be the person who's like, all right, enough is enough, you know? Amen. Like, devil, you're evicted from my bloodline. Amen. Get out of here, you know? Amen. And you have to come to that place of recognizing that you have to get tired of being tired. Yeah. But you got to seek it. Um, and any advice I would give anybody who's watching is that uh, uh, staying connected with ministries that do deliverance or, or seeking it. But the, the number one person that you need to seek is, is the Lord Jesus Christ because he's yeah. the only one that can set you free. Right. It says whom the Son sets free is free indeed, free indeed. Yeah. not the deliverance conference. Yeah. Which yeah. all of these are important. Right. But we have people who are running to deliverance conferences just to get a feeling and they have no accountability. They don't want to uh, submit. They don't <laughs> want to go through the process because sometimes – just being honest, the process does hurt a little bit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then you who are might be pastors or leaders watching, you you've been hiding it for so long. It's yeah. like how can I tell I feel this presence of God? How can I tell people that I've been dealing with but not, how can I tell that I've been like how can I tell I've been sleeping with somebody else or sleeping with the same sex or, or yeah. doing all of these things but I'm on the pulpit. Yeah. And so people hide their sin and the enemy is just right there, just building up a case yeah. to judge them. Just like there's, I'm not going to say the name, but there was a big church actually here in Texas yeah, where yeah. 
you know, a lot of people know it's been all over the news. But yeah. when I looked at that story, I was like, that doesn't make sense that it was 40 years ago yeah. that this happened. And now it's coming up. Right. And I'll give you this <laughs> wisdom. It's because every time you're about to step into something higher that God is calling you to, the enemy will come with an accusation. And if you have not cleansed your bloodline or dealt with the courts of heaven, or maybe you did, you have to look at that thing and say, I'm not resigning. <laughs> That's old. Yeah. If you want to judge me according to my past, you're judging the blood of Jesus. Yeah. And you're going to reap. You're going to reap for yourself that that judgment. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And so people don't understand that. They don't <coughs> engage with these matters. The courts of heaven is yeah. very important. Yeah. There's a judge that sits in heaven. There's an accuser. There's uh, the uh, mediator, Jesus. Yep. Then you have the witnesses. Yep. All right. And the Bible says that when we give our life to Jesus or when we sin and we repent quickly, we confess our sin. God removes, has removed all of the handwritten of ordinances that was against us, that was contrary to us, nailing them to his cross. Yeah. So we literally can stand there and say, the blood of Jesus speaks. Yep, I did it. I confess. I don't justify because he says yeah. when you're on your way to the judge. Yeah. Agree with your adversary quickly. Yeah. Lest the judge throw you into the prison. Wow. So confession is very important. Yeah. You have to confess quickly. Right. You have to don't justify. Oh, well, it would, don't even point it on the devil because that's what happened with Adam. Yeah. You see? Yeah. You say, Adam, where you at? Yeah. He blamed Eve. He blamed Eve. Yeah. And he blamed it's the like devil. the woman you gave me, you know. Yeah. yeah the woman me. you gave me right. was like, what? <laughs> wow. That's crazy. You see? So <laughs> that's crazy. had he had confessed, yeah. maybe it would have been different. God still have mercy. God still have wow. mercy. Wow. But because there is consequences to sin. Yeah. But. He wanted to have mercy the moment he kicked him out of the garden. Yeah. Even before he already had a plan set up. Right. But anyways, so uh, you confess, you you agree quickly. You just don't justify yourself. You let the blood of Jesus justify you. Wow. Because when God sees the blood, He don't see our blood clean. Yeah. Quote unquote. He don't see our righteousness washed. Yeah. He sees Jesus's righteousness. Yeah. He sees Jesus's blood. Yeah. That does, yes, wash us and cleanse our blood and et cetera, but it's literally him. Yeah. And you start to move from trying to become holy, trying to become perfect. Yeah. Trying to get free from sin, trying to fight the devil. Yeah. And you start to stand yourself in a position like royalty. Like, I I don't know what you're talking about. Exactly. If somebody come into this podcast and try to sit down, they like, I don't know why you in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have legal right to be here because we paid the price. Right. You're not here. Come anymore. on, come on. Come Jesus on, you better Jesus paid preach. the price, price for us. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. He paid the price for us. And all we have to do, all he's saying is, look, I died. I was perfect. Because he said the enemy of this world is coming, but he's found nothing in me. Yeah. So... Before he went on to the cross, he was perfect. Yeah. But the moment he was on the cross, that's why he was able to maneuver through every situation. Yeah. Every time they tried to accuse him, yeah. Jesus was able to move and they couldn't do anything. Yeah. Because there was a power, there was a force there that was just, he was justified. He was clean. Yeah. yeah. But the moment he was hanging on that cross, when sin was on him, that's when God took his turn on him. Yeah. And then the enemy was able to say, all right, we got you. Come on down to the place where you deserve. Wow. Hell. That's why he was able to go to hell. Yeah. That's wow. why he went to hell. Wow. Because sin yeah, was that's there. right. Because he took on the sins of the world. Mm -hmm. Man, that's and, crazy to think about. And so just like a sacrifice, it required blood. It required water for cleansing and fire on the altar. Jesus went to hell. Yeah. Wow. What's down there? Fire. Right. <laughs> you know what's so crazy about that, too, is like I was reading in the Word of God about how Jesus preached to the spirits mm -hmm. in in hell, essentially. Mm -hmm. Like, like even people in hell understood that the Messiah came in the flesh. That's crazy Amen. to think about. And he went down there to basically give them no excuse. Yeah. Because remember, before it was just the law. Yeah. And et cetera. He, give, he, he basically said, hey— you you have no excuse to now know about or so that nobody can justify it. Nobody right. can say that it's not fair. Right. But it was even giving of the law was to show us that we were um we were sinners. Yeah. It was it was a judgment. But yeah. now it says that 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 is done away with. Jesus fulfilled it. He obtained righteousness when he yeah. rose from the grave. Yeah. And he's standing at the door knocking, saying, "Hey, you have a sinful life uh, style. You have a sinful past. That's your life. You can keep it." which is death, 
or you can exchange your life for mine. Yeah. Which is perfect. Your blood for mine. Yeah. Which is perfect. Your righteousness for mine, which is perfect, and live according to my will. Now, you might say, I've done it. I've accepted Jesus. I've even went to deliverance. I've done renunciation. What's, why am I still? You have to understand that a righteous man may fall, may fall right down seven times per rise again. Eight. That's number one. Yeah. Number two, you also have to understand we will never be perfect until we get to heaven. Yeah. We may, that's why I said, and if you sin, we have an advocate. The blood of Jesus is strong enough to, to cover you of your sin. Yeah. But the Holy Spirit also, that's a, that's another working of the plan of salvation. Yeah. He comes to live on the inside of you. If you still have conviction, you're still walking down the right path. Absolutely. If you still have conviction. Now, if you don't have conviction. That's and scary. Not, and, and, and you just flat out, you don't care. <clears throat> which yeah. is, it's hard to judge that because I speak for myself. Yeah. Because I've had many people who, how could you? You know, you're a pastor, you're a leader, you're all these things, but yet you still had these problems. You don't understand what I was doing in my closet, which yeah. is why I feel the Holy Spirit. The Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart. Yet he killed a man and slept with his wife. And didn't repent for eight months, I think, too. I think it was like eight months. Yeah, but the moment he repented, Nathan came to him. It was a whole different ball game. Yeah. When you shed blood, that's one type of consequence that, hey, God don't play about the shedding of blood. Yeah. But let's say he didn't do that. He would have had a lot more mercy in yeah. touching that temple. Yeah. If you really look at the situation, the reason why he lost his child and why he couldn't do the temple is because he killed someone. Yeah. Right? But he committed adultery. God had mercy. The woman was caught in adultery. God yeah. had mercy. Yeah. And he says the same thing to everybody. I want to have mercy. He said, mercy triumphs over judgment. Yeah. I, God doesn't want to see you in bondage. He doesn't want to see you go to jail. He w doesn't want to see you die and go to hell. He wants to have mercy. Yeah. But you got to find that through humility. Yeah. Sometimes, like for my case, exposure. He's got to bring that thing to the light. Yeah. To force you to repent. Yeah. Absolutely. See what I'm saying? Wow. And, and some people, they only repent quickly because they got caught. No, it's got to yeah, be yeah. genuine repentance. It has you, to be. Humbling yourself. Like, like are you going to repent if no one knows about it? That's the thing. Exactly. Because I've had, <clears throat> I remember I had a moment in my Christ too where I fell into like minor sin and no one knew about it except for God. And man, oh man, I mean, literally the next day I was just like weeping. This was like maybe a year and a half into my salvation, maybe two years. It was like halfway through my walk. I've been saved for like four years now. Amen. No one knew about this but me and God. And I, I mean, immediately after I felt convicted, I remember I was like crying in my car, like just, you know, asking the Lord to forgive me. And I heard the word of the Lord in First John that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. He spoke that to me, that verse, and I just started crying. And I remember the day after, too, like, I just was eagerly seeking him, you know, and, like, not out of, like, a works thing. Like, oh, yeah, I fell into this sin. Now I got to seek you for a whole day to make it right. But, no, just, like, Lord, I want to show you, like, like I love you, you know, and, like, I really Amen. am. I mean, I was, I was great for that whole day, even after he forgave me. That shows where you're at, I feel like, with Christ when, well, how are you going to react to that when no one's looking? Amen. Right, because your character, your true character in your walk as a Christian is who you are when it's only you and when God and no one else. Because the world will say it's when you're alone, but we're never alone. We're always with the Lord. Amen. And I, that puts a holy fear of God in me too. Like, I think one of the reasons why it's so hard for me to fall into sin and actually commit a sin is because... I know God is there. Like Amen. he's, he's, I'm very intimate with him. I'm, I'm walking with him just like Adam did in the garden because I've been reconciled through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So because of that, like, it's not even an option. Amen. You know, I haven't, I haven't felt like into the major things like watching pornography, fornication, whatever. I haven't fell into that in years. Not because I'm some perfect, holy person. Although it says be perfect as your father is perfect. Amen. I don't look at it from a religious standpoint though. Like, Oh, I got to check all these boxes so I could be the cookie cutter Christian. Mm -hmm. It's like, no, the reason why I don't do that stuff is because, like, I, f I feel him so intimately within me. It's like Amen. I'm literally going against myself because literally, like, this body's not even mine, even though it is, but it isn't. Like, it's really his. But because, like, I'm in this earthly vessel, 
it still feels like I'm going against myself. Amen. Because this this temple isn't even mine. So I can't I can't like I can't willingly fall into that. Uh and even when I did on a minor scale, like oh, I felt so disgusting. Yeah. You know? So it's like I think that's where people need to get at in their walk with Jesus. It's like they're so interconnected with the vine mm-hmm. that it feels like they're tearing their own roots yep. or sinning against God. Like they're plucking their own plant and just destroying it mm-hmm. for sinning against God. Not that God is some external cosmic force, which, I mean, God is, you know, in the heavens, obviously. But your relationship with need, with God needs to be so intimate that when you sin against him, you literally feel like you're warring against yourself because you are, because the Holy Spirit lives in us. It even says in uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, I believe, 1 Thessalonians 4, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it is 1 Thessalonians 4, where we have to keep our bodies, uh, you know, sanctified, sanctified by living in purity me. and holiness and not to disregard his Holy Spirit that he's given in us. Amen. And King David understood, like, the severity of the Holy Spirit leaving mm-hmm. him before the indwelling could happen. He still felt the anointing and he prayed like, I pray you don't take your Holy Spirit from me. Amen, amen. And look what happened to Solomon, dude. As soon as he worshiped those false gods, as soon as he betrayed God. That's when the cycle repeated itself. Boom. And that's crazy too. Cause I was going to bring that up when you talked about the generational curses. Mm-hmm. I mean, look at Solomon, dude. He, you know, Solomon he, Adonijah. Yeah, I mean, uh, he, son that, uh, he was on that Bathsheba level times like 600, dude. Yeah, <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? And then and then <clears throat> another accusation that you see the enemy had in uh, David's bloodline is remember when he struck uh, King Saul and he yeah. almost killed him. Yeah. Look what happened with David's son, Absalom. Wow. And Adonijah both tried to kill and take the throne. Yeah. So you might say, but wouldn't David have known about the bloodline and this and this and this yeah. and that. The blood, well, number one, they didn't have the blood of Jesus back then. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Right. So it was still on the path of where we are today in yeah. Christ. Yeah. And so um, God just, you know, had mercy on whom he had mercy. Thanks be to God. After yeah. that, we found, you know, Jehoshaphat and all the other different kings that yeah. Jehu, Josiah. Yeah. Um, but uh, there's something that also I wanted to hit that you said, because there are a lot of people that will be watching this and they're like, there, there has where are the practical steps because when you say things like i just love jesus and my love for him is what makes me not sin to somebody like myself i need something more practical yeah. i tell you number one is daily repentance yeah that's every very key. day that i get up that i get up i get on my knees and i made it a, like a practice and i and i say lord thank you for this day i repent for any sin all right, the Lord starts to show me, dang, yesterday I should I asked for forgiveness. And wow. there's just like this refreshing cleansing that happens right there, right? Uh, just humility, being vulnerable, being uh, accountable is critical. Yeah. You make a mistake, have a leader, have somebody that you need to know, like in constant. Don't be afraid of your position, your title. Confess. All right? I usually do that at night because mm-hmm. the word of God even says that don't let the sun go down on your anger. Yeah, I'm not yeah. angry every night. I don't get angry like that much actually at all. If, in fact, at all. That's one thing I thank the Lord for because I used to have really bad anger issues. I don't have that anymore. Amen. But I do that same thing, but at night, like before I go to bed, I, and I've been praying this since I got saved. Amen. Some people may be like, bro, that's a little religious. I don't care. I'm I, like, I'm going to repent, you know, like Amen. there are, maybe there's hit stuff that I don't even realize is sin. I mean, yep. bro, we're in the matrix. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Even though we have the way out, which is, you know, through the blood of Jesus Christ, mm-hmm. like we don't, sometimes we're not even capable, like knowing, we don't even know what we're capable of in terms of, of sin that may be hidden from our, you know, limited understanding. That's mm-hmm. why I just repent at night, man. Like if there's anything that that's I good. did during the day that I don't know, that's mm-hmm. not religion. Exactly. That's not like uh, legalism. That's not works. That's just, just you catch a revelation of, of, mm-hmm of true relationship like i love him i love him so much like you know if there's anything i did that he didn't even like like I mean, we're married to god dude exactly. like are you gonna are you gonna go to i mean the bible even says that you need to make things right with your wife before you pray because your prayers will be blocked mm. so if the bible says that god is our husband then like shouldn't we treat him in that same way Amen. essentially like i want to make sure i'm right with the lover of my soul even before i go to bed mm-hmm. 
and I'm not afraid, oh, God's going to strike me down if I, no, like, that's not it at all. I could probably go to bed without doing that, but I love him. I want to do that. Mm -hmm. Lord, forgive me if I did anything today, and I just pray, you know, that your presence would be over me as I sleep. And he, he loves that. It literally strengthens your relationship because it's faith that you do it in. Yeah. And what pleases God? Yeah. Faith. Yes. So he grants you the presence. He grants you the strength of your relationship, the closeness, or the drawing near to him. And you draw near to you yeah. part of the relationship with your walk with God because you're doing everything in faith. And another thing I wanted to hit that you said is uh, is that the religious thing um, where we do things to try to make up. There's nothing you could do to earn more of God's love or less. It's yeah. unconditional. It's straight across the board. Yeah. And um, when you do that, you daily repenting, um, accountability. The third thing is uh, Ezekiel 13. It says that God was against a certain group of people because they continued to put the block of uh, the stumbling block of iniquity before their face. Yeah. This thing. <laughs> Dude, I know. This thing right here I is know. dangerous. You can't have Instagram if you're struggling with lust right now. Oh, yeah. So you true. can't have. Uh, don't hang around. This, don't put yourself in that position. Don't yeah. flirt. I love Pastor Vlad said this. He said, don't flirt with sin. Yeah. It's like, ooh. Don't try to see how far you can get mm. until you can. Don't know. State. That's why I say flee it. Yeah. Flee it. So put yourself in good positions always. For me, I didn't do that all the time. I tried to be Superman. Yeah. I tried to pass yeah. with God. I t Today, I'm going to pass. <laughs> I'm going to hang around or I'm going to sleep here. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do yeah. all these that put myself in bad position, that, that drove temptation. To the point where you just literally forget about everything and you give into that sin. So you have to put those barriers up to protect, like you said earlier, your relationship with God. And when you do that, God will honor that. And it's only like now, this season of my life, not just this season, just this like this area. This is where Paul says at the end of his life, the only thing I want to do is to know God. Yeah. You start to walk with God further and further. When you realize that, or when you get to the point where you think that, man, I'm good, God then brings you down, and, he, yeah. and you're like, holy smokes, Lord, <laughs> I'm not perfect as I yeah. thought. And in that brokenness, I think, was it the Bible verse of the day, I think? Uh, I think it's the Bible verse of the day. Yes, Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is near unto those that are of a broken heart yeah. and saves such be of a contrite spirit yes and so there was a, a season of my life even like 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 literally last year where god said all right it's time for me to come and break you bring this to the surface bring this everybody this is the person that you guys see as this man of god and man i had a choice yeah stop the ministry in my life or deal with this thing that has been tormenting and attacking my family for years. Yeah. And I chose that route. Yeah. And now with this revelation, with this truth, I mean, the amount of people that even in my church that are coming for prayers, coming for deliverance, it's like, whoa. Wow. But God had to take me through a journey to teach me. Yeah. So that I can be able to teach others. So if, you, if you're watching this video, it's because there's something that, that God wants to speak to you about yeah there's something that you might in your heart be feeling like i want to be free i want to you want to help others but you don't know how to get free this is it once you begin to destroy those covenants destroy those altars break those things in, in prayer through fasting praying in tongues critical believe in that yeah uh, um uh, the renunciation all of those things and then most importantly just from a standpoint of victory, enforcing the victory. Because a lot of people, when they look at spiritual warfare, they think they're, they we're going to go fight the devil. We're not going to go fight nothing. Yeah. He's already defeated. Right, right. You're just ignorant. Right. You see exactly. what I'm saying? Like Come the fight on. with Ryan and um, Tank, I think. Yeah. Is, uh, the reason why he won Tank, because he had knowledge. Yeah. They told him, they said, hey, if you get in and hit him right here in this area, yeah, you'll knock him out. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? So w he already had the victory. When the moment he got the knowledge, he got the victory. Yeah. Right? So yeah. he could have been in there and fighting this whole time. And he could have been punching Ryan's face. Yeah. Kicking him in the legs. Yeah. He would have been wearing himself out. Yeah. All he had to do was wait for that right opportunity from the knowledge he received. Get close, strike his body. Yeah. So wraps. Yeah. And that's what we need to do. Yep. Get close 
to the Father. And the Bible says that we, he will strike our heel, but we will crush his head. Yeah. We strike the enemy with our with the with the power that Jesus gave us through yeah. three keys. Number one, the name of Jesus. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Number two, the blood of Jesus that yeah. gives us the uh, the positioning, the ability to be even able to stand there and use the name of Jesus. Yeah. And then number three, the Holy Spirit. Yes. And I'll even add four, the Word of God. The Word of God. Because that's 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 our, literally our sword. That's key. You see, if you G- want to outsmart mm-hmm. demons, just hit them with the word of God. They, they hit in it. the correct context too. G- Eve, you come to Eve. Did God surely say whatever? Oh well, yeah. And then she stopped conf- quoting the word. Yeah. But he came to Jesus the same way. Tempt him first with food. Right. It is written. Yeah. Come again. I'll give you all this glory. It is written. Right. Uh, uh, worship me. Right. It is written. And right. the Bible said he fled. Yep. You see, so because the enemy, the word of God is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. And a lot yes. of times when I would get tempted in my past and even up until this day when lust or whatever comes, temptation come, uh, I will feel it. Yeah. And you, you can feel when the temptation is there. Now, just because you get tempted doesn't mean you've sinned or exactly. you're a sinner. No matter what, you will still be tempted from now to Jesus come back. Yeah. All right? Yeah. It's just what you do with that temptation. Right. If you allow that temptation to enter into your mind yeah. and drop into your heart, it becomes iniquity. <laughs> Yeah. Confess that thing with your mouth. Oh man, I, I just want to. Next thing you know, sin. Because that's why I said. That's why the Bible says, "When lust have conceived, yeah, it brings forth sin." Yeah. But I thought it was already sin when it said lust. Right. Mm-hmm. It said we're drawn away with our own lust and enticed. Yeah. In James, enticed, I was just enticed. reading that the other day. Mm-hmm. You have to catch when the temptation becomes desire. Because exactly. then the desire will go. become sin. If the temptation hey, already iniquity. became. D- yes, exactly. And but if the temptation sin. already became desire, mm-hmm. the seed's already been planted and yep. it's already taken root. And now the devil waters it, which makes it become sin. Sin. Because and that's the mm-hmm. that's the important part that you touched on, though, because people think, oh, if I'm tempted, does that mean that I've sinned? Mm-hmm. No, sinned. It's, it's when the temptation becomes desire. Yep. It's when the external becomes internal. And you start meditating and making a movie and planning it out. It's yeah. wraps because that's yes. why Jesus, he didn't say, depart from me, you who practice sin. Yeah. It said you who practice iniquity. Iniquity, yeah. iniquity is what I like to say, the sin in the heart. Yeah. When it's building in your heart. So you have yeah. to stop it right here. That's why I said the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God through the pulling down of strongholds, mm-hmm. casting down ev- imaginations. Wow. And every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity yeah. every thought to the what, obedience of Christ. Yeah. See, we always say the weapons of our warfare are, are mighty through God are pulling down strongholds. We forget the entire part of that scripture yeah. gives us the whole layout. Yeah. Resist the devil here. Or with the spirit. But at, when he comes here in your mind, you have to. Re- and what I usually do is say, I, I rebuke those thoughts in Jesus' name. Or I rebuke those thoughts and feelings in Jesus' name. Or yeah. I quote the scripture. The Bible says, yeah. resist the devil, he'll flee from me. Yeah. Literally, the moment it comes, it goes just yeah. as fast as it comes. Yeah. Because he says, you quench every fiery dart. So it comes quick. It's just boom. And you're like, whoa. Yeah. The moment you're like, whoa. And you're like, whoa. And oh. And wow. It's reps. Yeah, exactly. The moment you're like, whoa. And no. Yep. They flee. Yep. So. That's so true because even me too, like I've had moments where it'll hit me and I won't counter it. I'll just be like, bro, that's annoying that I'm getting that thought, even though it's not my thought. Mm-hmm. One thing that my pastor reinforced to me, um, which, you know, shout out to my pastor if he's watching this, is you got to counter that right away. Amen. Sometimes I do counter it, but sometimes I just, I get lazy and I'm like, man, whatever, that was the devil. I'm not going to give it attention but no like if you do that then he's gonna be gonna keep hitting you yeah so every time dude every time i get some sort of temptation or some unclean spirit trying to speak something to me like i just either respond with the word of god or i praise god Amen. because they hate the praise of god to demons because king david said that his praise like omitted a sweet fragrance to the lord mm-hmm. and demons hate the smell of that fragrance and what's cool about that is that when King Saul was being tormented by the spirit, who, who did he call? King David. To play the harp. To play the harp. So worship yeah. is, is very true. Yes. It's very yes. true. It and, drove him away, this the evil spirit. Mm-hmm. And that was before Jesus too, yeah. you know? Like so These well, are before all the whole before the Holy Spirit, all you know, truths. could be manifested in the way that we do mm-hmm. today, you know? And and people might be watching, like, I do that, keep doing it. You see what I'm saying? People just they try one, two, three, four times and they give up. Yeah. No. 
the devil hates consistency. Yeah. One thing that he doesn't have is one of the fruit of the spirit, which is patience. <laughs> so if wow. you keep at it, eventually he will flee from you. Yeah. But you can't give up. Yeah. You have to continue to stand close to the, wow, to the fire. You have deep, to keep bro. fighting. That's why I said ask, keep asking. That's why I said that there was a woman who was coming to the judge saying, deliver me of my adversary. He said, she yeah. keeps coming to me. Let me answer her request. Yeah. You got to keep banging on heaven's door. Come yeah. boldly to the throne of grace yeah. that you may obtain grace and mercy and help and in time of trouble. Yeah. And in time of need. Yeah. And so if you're watching, you're struggling with those things. Um, there are many tools online that you can watch. You know, you can reach out to the page and get materials. But in, 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 in all reality, it's just you. It's just Jesus. Like you, yeah. you literally have to focus your mind, your strength, everything, and your faith in Jesus and him setting you free. But if you've already given your life to Jesus, you have to understand something. You are already set free. Amen. You are already set free. All right? And people don't understand that. Again, they're trying to get saved after being saved. They're trying to, yeah. once you're saved, that's it. Now, yeah. I'm not into the once you're saved, always saved. But yeah, yeah, there's yeah, yeah, some yeah. type of, in that statement, there is a, a, a wisdom. Mm -hmm. Once you're saved, God's never going to take away your salvation. Yeah, it's us who choose to walk away from it. Walk away. and But people say, well, if you walk away, you were never really there. No, that's not true. No. There are some genuine people who really gave their life to Jesus, but it's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. There are things that they just don't have knowledge in. Yeah. So once you're saved, you're locked in. Uh -huh. But you got to do something. Yeah. Work out your salvation with fear and, fear and trembling. And that's, see, that's so key because there's two extremes to this. Mm -hmm. There's... One, the once saved, always saved cult where it's like, okay, you can just believe in Jesus and sin as much as you want because you're already made righteous, which mm -hmm. that's not the gospel at all. That's a mockery of the crucifixion, if anything. And then there's the other extreme of like, oh, well, you were never one of us. I've known right. people who have backslidden and have come back, you know? Well, if they were never one of us, but then they became one of us, how does that work? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, yeah, like once you get saved, I think the best way to... Um, paraphrase what you're saying is people think that freedom and healing is a process which yeah like deliverance is a process mm -hmm. and, and and getting healed from soul wounds for sure but in terms of being free from rejection depression anxiety that's already been bought by the blood of jesus Amen. you don't have to keep getting healed from rejection mm -hmm. just accept that his word it's is true that, that's so that is actually a powerful thing you just just accept it yeah some people genuinely like to keep in that hurt. Yeah. They like the they they don't want to give it up. And they say, "Oh, well, you know, God's still working on me. He already worked on us uh, on the cross." That just to give them an excuse to stay where they are. Yes. Give them an excuse to continue to judge people. Give them an excuse to justify their 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 secret life. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Cuz I've had my fair share of people who Oh man, when I talk, I'm talking I I saw this this statement on um Instagram. It was a pastor. He said the news never covers uh, planes when they take off or when they're in the air. Yeah. They only cover it when they crash. Wow. And I'm talking about, I made a crash. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, I mean, there was just accusation after accusation after accusation after accusation after accusation. But people are forgetting uh, the same mercy and grace that you are giving me. You'll need it one day. Yeah. I teach people that all the time, that you must always extend grace and mercy. And you need the blood of Jesus too. Yeah. He says, if you see a brother overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, meaning you're supposed to be spiritual. Yeah. Restore such a one with the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, lest you also be tempted. Yeah. So yes. that's why I do. I cannot stand ministries that get on YouTube. Oh, and their speak entire about ministry it. is. Did you see what this person, that, so that person cringe, did? bro? It's the ministry of accusation. Yeah. Instead of doing that video, which you don't <laughs> realize that could be old, may not be old. Or instead of doing that video, which you don't realize that that person could have repented already. Yeah. Or right. which you don't realize that you could have just went and talked to them. Now you have, what, two, three hundred thousand followers and thousands yeah. of views on that video of people now looking bad at a grace that they could have been receiving from. Yeah. The danger of gossip it's and so slander. True. And I was problem. watching a video the other day of a big ministry who I listened to uh, was being accused of from another ministry saying that the and it was an old video saying that when you're rising you know don't give to the poor etc i understood what he was saying 
But the the thing of this was when I was watching this video of the guy accusing this apostle, I went to go listen to the apostles, just a normal teaching. When I tell you, I literally like I felt like I was like, man, I don't want to listen to this because he could be false. Yeah. And I remittedly, I, I paused it and I was like, no, nah, I renounce every spirit of accusation, every yeah. gossip. I, I cleanse my heart. I think well of the man of God. But just watching me 30 seconds of a video of somebody who who was accusing him, it put a bad image in my mind. So, yeah, it may be true. And I was looking at the comments. There was someone who said, brother, you're digging up one video from this apostle. He has other teachings. Yeah. What if somebody digged up your old stuff? Yeah. And that's what people don't realize. What if somebody digged up your past or yeah. your right now? Mm -hmm. You don't want that. Mm -hmm. So you have to extend grace. Now, there's a fine line. We have people who are blatantly in sin, blatantly doing witchcraft, blatantly doing this. Yeah. The Bible talks about, hey, yeah. don't fellowship with these people. <clears throat> but your mm -hmm. goal should be not, don't fellowship with these people. Mark them, kick them out, and not, you know what? We're not going to fellowship with you a while, but we're praying, Father in Jesus, name, yeah. have mercy on him. Yeah. Father in Jesus, brother, you got to repent. Yeah. Not, brother, you need to repent. You right, see right, what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. So the church has it all oh, just all over the place yeah. from every realm of influence and spirit of, of, of each category. But I believe that the reason why we're even on this podcast is because there's truth that needs to be out. Yeah. Like Apostle James, the guy who was a Satanist and got saved there, there's, there's revelation coming to the body of Christ. Why? Yeah. Because Jesus says before he comes back, he's coming for a what? A spotless bride. Exactly. But how can they be spotless if, number one, they're not preparing themselves or Jesus isn't helping them? Right. So right now, you're seeing all these ministries being exposed and, and people stepping down and all these things. is because God is bringing that. He's like, okay, I cannot come back and my people are literally all going to go to hell. Absolutely yeah. not. Yeah. I'd rather expose you. I'd rather have you sit down. I'd rather take you through this process. I'd rather you deal with these things now. So that when I come, you are ready. You know why I think Jesus is coming back very soon? Because the megachurch system is being destroyed right now. Mm -hmm. Because a megachurch system does not prepare uh the the megachurch system does not prepare the church of God to be spotless and without blemish. Mm -hmm. Cause like we were mentioning earlier, there's no accountability in that system. It's just we're gonna have a congregation with three thousand to ten thousand people. We're gonna preach a message and we're not gonna check in on people's spiritual state. We're just going to get on the pulpit. We're going to preach our tithing message, which, you know, I believe in tithing. I'm not speaking Amen. against it. We're going to, you know, we're going to, you know, talk talk about a verse in the Bible, and then we're going to just come up with a story around that one verse, right? And we're not going to hold people accountable for the habitual sin that they're living in. We're not going to disciple people. Amen. We're not, most of the mega churches don't even believe in deliverance because they use the scripture out of context. What does they have fellowship with darkness? Even though Paul's talking about people, not the Holy Spirit and demons. Right, so no deliverance, no accountability, mm -hmm. no discipleship. So the bride is not spotless. The bride is with blemish. And I believe that the mega church system is being dismantled because it even says in the word of God that judgment begins in the house That's of God. God so God is cleaning up the church. And this fake system that was implanted into Christianity, which is not the gospel at all, because if you look at the book of Acts, the, the, that was not a mega church system. That was a, I mean, okay, another example. You look in the New Testament when Apostle Paul is building churches and he's sending Timothy out and his other, you know, people that he's discipling. They're not running mega churches. They are holding people accountable. He's sending them letters of accountability, even if he's not there physically. Mm -hmm. You know, like there is accountability. There's discipleship. He's he's telling people, like, for example, you know, in the church. In the New Testament, there was a guy who was sleeping with his stepmother. Mm -hmm. Paul said, kick him out. Deliver him to Satan. Have nothing to do with this guy. Mm -hmm. You're not going to see that in a mega church. You're not going to see people getting kicked out for fornication if they keep doing it over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. That's why lukewarm Christians love mega churches. Yeah. Because they get the, the good feeling of, oh, okay, I get to go to church on Sunday, mm -hmm. so I'm good. But my sin isn't being called out to me. So, you know, I'm I'm good with God because I'm doing <clears throat> I'm doing this attendance. But, you know, I can still live in my sin, essentially. Mm -hmm. That's so, you know, I don't I don't take pleasure in systems falling that are centered around centered around the word of God. But the reality is, is that if you're centering something around the word of God that had nothing to do with the original root of what the church was intended to be, then it's not going to last. It's not going to last, you know, and I think that God is he wants there because you, the bible says they met in houses but also in the synagogues so and two thousand was saved this day three thousand was saved this day yeah. 
there is a uh, healthy, you see what I'm saying? There's healthy mega churches. There's yeah. healthy systems. People who do have deliverance mm-hmm. do 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 what is what is good. It's just the body of Christ, like you said, is being dismantled, uh, and and ch- some church circles are being dismantled, so that I believe God can equip. Yeah. So that God can, because the thing is, with the mega churches being dismantled, where are they going to run to? Right. The people who they were rejecting. Yes. The, the the ministries where they were because they need the help. And then yeah. these small groups and circles who got the power, got the intercession, got mm-hmm. the prayer, going to help them, and then they're going to rise again. Yeah. Because that was always God's intention. He, he he does not take pleasure. I think I saw a scripture. It said God does not take pleasure. It was a certain translation. Does not take pleasure in the fall of, of righteous people. Mm-hmm. He doesn't He doesn't like that. But the enemy loves that. You know what I'm saying? Like the church that we know about in Texas. Like, oh, he loved that. Oh, he Satan loved that the loves it when a church stepped falls. down. And it yeah. was, but I was telling my team, I was like, it wasn't just for him. It wasn't just, a t- it was a whole ministry. Because now here are people coming out saying, oh, they were taking money and this and this and that. And now the whole church is being destroyed. Mm-hmm. And all those people scattered. That was the goal. If yep. he can't get with the sheep, he's going to strike sh- the go shepherd. straight to the strict yep. shepherd. Yep. But sometimes, sometimes. It's actually the Lord striking the shepherd mm. because we put our shepherd on a pedestal. So he said, yeah. okay, let me bring him down then. Yeah. Now you were worshiping this pastor. Now worship me. Yeah. He literally, he literally said that. It's that. Wow. And then there's also the shepherds who are just corrupt. And you know said, what's crazy? Sorry to interrupt you. That is so true. You want to know why? Mm-hmm. Because when that church that you're talking about that ended up where the guy ended up falling, I read an article where the woman who worked at that church for like two decades is like, I'm done with religion. Mm-hmm. I'm like, so then you worship the man. You didn't worship God. Mm-hmm. Wow. How are you done with religion because of, of your pastor fell? You have mm-hmm. no root in the word of God to begin with. Exactly. Like, so that goes exactly to what you're saying. People are worshiping men above God, thinking that they're worshiping God. If you fall away mm-hmm. from the church because your pastor had a scandal or something, you never worship God to begin with. Mm-hmm. You That's worship true. men. You worship men. You worship the encounter. You worship the prophetic word. You worship the power of God. Same thing with me. You know, there are people who walked away and was like, I don't want to do anything with church because of you. But that doesn't make sense. It makes no sense. If you were building your relationship with God this whole time, you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so God will hold them accountable for that as well. Mm-hmm. God will hold them accountable Absolutely. for that. But we pray. We, lo- we walk in love. We love people. We extend mercy. And we help people as much as we can. We yeah. live in humility. We live in, as an open book. Mm-hmm. Like I was an open book on this live podcast. It wasn't fun. But yeah. I know that even before I received a text from a few people, church members, immediately getting attacked on our way here, it was a text. It was just like, I know it was because the devil does not want this podcast. Wow. Now. So I mean, even, even for, me, I got attacked like four or five days ago. Yeah, I sickness, got hit with I mean, the sickness. But, you know, I thank the Lord for giving me wisdom to get me to be supernaturally healed. Amen. And there's know? nothing about Murad or Nick. It's everything about Jesus. Yeah. And the, the Jesus that we're discovering and the people that need to be reached. Mm-hmm. You see what I'm saying? And so, um, that's it. Wow, man, that's powerful. Is there anything else that you want to, you know, let the podcast know before we close out? Uh, to those that are watching, um, I obviously have a type of, uh, a lot of influence on social media, people who was connected to my ministry, not connected to my ministry. In my life story, using this platform as an opportunity, I want to just give all the glory to Jesus Christ, number one, for what he's done in my life. But I want to also just, you know, like repent. You know, if there's anybody that knows me that have been hurt, maybe something I've said, something you didn't agree with, or my sin in general, um, just ask God for, I'm asking God to extend mercy to myself because we all need it. And you're watching this because God led you here and you can see clearly that what God can do with a man who humbles himself and does repent, he can lift them up to uh, even like a platform like this. God wants to do that same thing with you, but you have to understand the mercy of God. And so just want to, you know, apologize for all those that are watching, viewers, people that maybe walked out um, from my circle. Uh, just give me mercy and I ask for forgiveness. And then secondly, um, if you're watching this video and you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, maybe this was something that was very convicting to you. And eye-opening 
to you, like things that you discovered that you never knew that, or the answers that you were looking for. It was only because of Jesus. The Bible says that we all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I've sinned, Nick said, everybody have sinned watching this video. There's no one righteous, no, not one. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It doesn't matter how far you've been in the world before Christ and how far you've fallen away from God after Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ can set you free today and cleanse you from your unrighteousness. He Come said, on. if you confess your sin unto the Lord Jesus Christ, he will cleanse you from your unrighteousness and he will wash you. He will put that new turban on, that new robe on, that new ring on you. He will welcome you back home. God is not ready to judge you and punish you. He desires that none perish, but all come to repentance. And this is God's call for your life to surrender it fully to him and seek the help that you need. And if you're watching this video and you would like to receive a fresh dedic rededication to the Lord, or this is your first time, maybe you're Muslim, maybe you're in a LGBT, uh, homosexual lifestyle, or whatever it is, there is hope in Jesus. And if you want to receive that, all you have to do is believe this prayer within your heart. The Bible says, believe in your heart, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. It starts here. Today is the day of salvation. Pray this prayer and say, Jesus, forgive me for all my sin. I believe you are the Son of God that died and rose on the third day. Wash me with your blood and have mercy on me. Forgive me for my sins, the sins of my father and mother, my ancestors, going back 75 generations. Have mercy on me. I renounce the sin of my past, rebellion, pride, witchcraft, sexual immorality, perversion, bitterness, unforgiveness, anger, Say, I forgive every person who has hate me, who has hurt me. I release them to you now. And I break all ungodly soul ties that I have formed with past relationships. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Use me for your glory. And may I never be the same again after today. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 That's powerful, bro. Amen. I want to thank you so much for coming on today, Amen. man. I really appreciate it. We want to thank you guys as well for watching too. We hope you were edified by this. Glory to Jesus Christ that we get to, you know, edify the church and reach people through digital evangelism. It truly is a blessing, guys. If this ministry has blessed you in any way, I do have a link in the description where you can sew in. You can either become a monthly partner or you can sew in one time. I also have merch, Christian merch that I drop, which is also linked in the description. I'm going to put Marad's information whether it be like youtube instagram whatever you want me to put in there you can also find that in the description as well i love you guys so much i'll see you guys very soon for another video may god bless all of you in the mighty name of jesus christ Amen. take care and peace out